So I rather like this. This has kind of got like a rangy, I want to get up there and uh, go to a sports game, a boxing match kind of, um, kind of nose. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to this fun tasting here. I've got a nice lineup of random whiskeys from my shelves. Now, I get a lot of things sent to me on a very regular basis. And one of these brands up here I've actually rated in the past. And so this is fun to revisit them to see like how they are progressing. And that is Clyde May. Clyde Mays is a brand that is being bottled in Alabama and they're very, uh, very much known for championing their, uh, their legacy through the Clyde Mays, who was a distiller. Um, and, um, but they, they have kind of coined the term Alabama style. Now, there's not really a much of a legitimate uh, distilling history from Alabama. There were some distillers there in the 1800s. Uh, but mostly that was kind of like moonshine country. So when you see, when someone, when Clyde Mays kind of came out of the gate, uh, they had, um, they got a lot of attention. Some of it negative, because how can you have Alabama style whiskey when you are buying product from Indiana? Kind of goes to that, kind of goes to that old saying that we have in the source whiskey market. You know, my grandpa's recipe was just the same as uh, Indiana's 95% uh, rye. So it's very common, to, 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 to be honest with you, I don't even really care about that stuff anymore as much as I used to. What I really focus on now, because there, there's something to be said for this, is the whiskey any good? Um, the backstories and all that, you know, the bullshit in American whiskey is never going to change. And people are always going to have, um, you know, promote their family histories if they have one, and probably buy someone else's whiskey. And that's that's the case with with Clyde Mays. That's not good or bad. That's just the state of what what the market is. And I think it's actually imperative to uh, be critical of those backstories, but also most importantly, to focus on the whiskey. Because just because you're getting source whiskey doesn't mean it's going to be good. You don't have a guarantee that you're going to have the same quality from uh, LDI or MGP as someone else. So let's give this one a shot. This is the straight bourbon whiskey. This is the 92 proofer. It's got a gorgeous nose to it. Big old hunks of... Uh, big old hunks of like... Uh, bread, doughy, like doughy, like you're in the bakery just kind of making uh, making dough. Then after that, a uh, little bit of um, kind of sugar cane, you know, some sweetness there. But sugar cane is also a little raw, so there's kind of got that raw, like, vegetal that's there. Well, the taste is pretty, pretty mild, kind of light to be honest with you. I don't get an entire, uh, a lot of complexity there. Uh, I do get a little sweetness toward the back. That dough, that doughiness I was telling you about, um, it does kind of like persist on the palate a little bit. So this is a. It's a 92 proof product. Um, I'd probably get Evan Williams, Evan Williams Bottled and Bond or Evan Williams Black Label or uh, really even Woodford Reserve or something like that over this one. Now here we go. This is uh, Clyde May. Clyde May's original Alabama style whiskey. Alabama style. Now they do actually approach on their label what is Alabama style. They have it bolded and underlined. What is Alabama style whiskey? It's Clyde May's proprietary process that makes this a makes this 
four-year-old American whiskey, unusually smooth. Clyde Mays whiskey starts with a nose. Well, I think it's into the the, pro, the stuff there. Now, I have not actually interviewed them uh, to to discuss like you know what they are doing with their stocks, um, but I do know that they are getting stocks from Indiana. They have appropriately disclosed that on their label. So kudos to them for following federal regulations. You know, what's interesting is that just because you get whiskey from MGP doesn't mean it's going to be as good as someone else's. I mentioned that earlier. Here are some things that can play into uh, the factor of making it taste differently. One, they could be doing different filtration methods. Two, they could actually have a, a particular style of aging uh, that may take advantage of the Alabama humidity or something like that. And three, uh, proofing water is very much a, a real thing. It's a, it has an impact on, it can have an impact on the flavor. So I rather like this. This is kind of got like a rangy, I want to get up there and uh, go to a sports game, a boxing match kind of, um, kind of nose. Oh yeah. Gritty, kind of some grits there. So like grits, like a some grits with a with a little spoonful of sugar on here. I like the I like this one quite a bit. Yeah, this is um, I'm drinking this when I'm in the mood for real gritty corn. There's a touch of sugar there. This is this is in that league with like mellow corn. Um, some of the grainier bourbons and whiskeys that I have tasted that I really, really like. This actually does, like, if I were to be making a case for a style that would probably be unique to Alabama, this would be it because they did, this is not a bourbon. Um, this is more on the lines of, you know, a, this, this is definitely more on the lines of like a corn whiskey, um, probably far more probably doesn't have the the corn percentages for a corn whiskey but this is along the lines of something that does have a unique style to it so this 80 for this 85 proof um, American whiskey I think kind of serves the purpose of what Clyde Mays might be trying to do quite a bit different and I actually do like it over the 92 proof one It's even got, reminds me a little bit of like some of the Irish whiskeys that come in with a grain approach and then soften and become a little sugary or a little, uh, you know, what, sweet there toward the back end. But uh, highly recommend that one. Really tasty. Now we're going to go with uh, Wheel Horse Rye. It's a straight rye, which means it has to be at least two years old. And with rye, there is also the possibility that if you don't see the word straight, that means that there's a possibility that they could have added flavoring to it. Rye does have that within its definition. Bourbon can never have flavor or coloring added to it, whereas rye can. But if you see straight on the label, that's a guarantee that there's been nothing added to it. So this was distilled in Kentucky and made, made in Owensboro, Kentucky in particular. There's one distillery there, that's the OZ Tyler Distillery, former, uh, former workhorse place that made a lot of great uh, whiskeys over the years. Here's, here's a kicker for you, coming in at 101 proof, non-chill filtered, and this is distilled by Jacob Call, who's the master distiller at OZ Tyler, and that is What's that? So here we go.
Now, uh, OZ Tyler is a distillery that does use the uh, rapid aging process known as Terra Pure or Terra Sencha. And I'm not seeing that called out here anywhere on the bottle. And this is a company that does take pride in that process. So I would be uh, shocked if they used that and did not put it on the label. However, it is bottled by uh, a company in Rhode Island. So this is bottled by Ocean State Distillers and Wound Socket, Rhode Island. Now listen, I've not spent much time in uh, Rhode Island. But I would think that if I saw the word wound socket on a map, I'm taking my rental car and I'm going straight over there and I'm buying a coffee cup that says I've been in wound socket. That's a cool name for a town. Whew. It is funky. Okay, really, uh, really, really oak forward. And after, after the oak, big burst of cinnamon, a lot of cinnamon there. And then um, like a bubble gummy, um, you know, like, you, like you're chewing bubble gum. It's the, uh, the yellow pack. I can't think of the name of it. It's like a banana. It's not. This is not a banana smell. Don't take that. Don't take it that way. But it's like a banana chewing gum. This is a different smell than a banana. It's like you're chewing it. And you blow the bubble, and you can smell it right there. It's that kind of smell. Okay. Well, I'll say this. That's the best thing I've tasted that's come out of that uh, out of that distillery uh, since they started, um, you know, redoing their own stuff. So it's young. It is. Um, it's still over oak for me. Like there's, it, it, it's it's green. It's it's oaky. But there are some, uh, you know, some some really toasted rye bread. There is there's there's a lot of promise in this bottle. Yeah, a lot of promise in this bottle. I'm excited to see what these guys have coming down the pipe. Um, one thing to note. They don't have an age on here. So it says straight, but if it's under four years old by federal law, you are, uh, oh, there it is, for a minimum of two years. They really should put the age on here, but that's being nitpicky. And, you know, I'm not saying this is a label violation, but it very well could be. The, way it's labeled but anyway it does um, it approaches really really much like a young young um, whiskey but it shows promise it shows promise and there's not like I said um, it's probably the best thing I've tasted from that distillery so here we go. We're going to Idle Hands, 13-year-old straight bourbon whiskey, distilled in 2005 in Indiana, and bottled by Wood, Wood, Wood Ventures in Traverse City, Michigan. Now this is the same um, uh, group. You can tell you can you can tell a lot by bottles. Or you can tell a lot by the these kind of like whiskeys that come out. And you don't, you may not know who they are by the bottles. This is like a favorite bottle of a guy named Dave Schmier. 
Dave Schmier was the uh, founder of uh, Redemption, and Redemption Rice sold to uh, Deutsch, um, Deutsch and Sons a few years ago, which also owns Yellowtail. But he then later came out with uh, this President and Ambassador um, series, as well as uh, Deadwood. And this is Deadwood Presents Idle Hands. And uh, Dave, if you're watching this, I'd love it if you would cut back on the wax. Damn near cut my hand off opening, you know, cutting that wax. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm. That. I smelled that right away. I smelled that right away. Yeah. This is, um, got a lot of bitterness to it. It's um, uh, it's got banana, and then under that, like a, a, a gosh darn awful lot of bitter. It's like just bitter. I mean, I was not expecting that. Sometimes uh, I was not expecting that from a uh, from someone I I really admire. And I think is a great bottler. Um, wow. I mean, it's like it's like somebody took took the took, took the bark off of the tree that was used to uh, make the whiskey or to to age the whiskey, and then put it in there. I mean, it's just like really bitter, over tannic. And then under that, you got banana. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Not a fan of that. That is, that is actually probably my least favorite whiskey that Dave has put out. But, you know what? Tastings are about the moment. And today, in this moment, not a fan. Looking forward to the next release. Love it. Eh, drinking a couple things over this. But in a pinch, I would drink it. So I hope you enjoyed this round of the tasting for Friday. Please make sure you're clicking the subscribe button so you don't miss any tastings coming up. Until next week, I'll see you later.